Hello and welcome to video number four in our work from home video series. Today's topic addresses space and weight problems with conveyor drive systems. Our video is sponsored by Romeca Corporation and I'm your host, Mike Kowinski. We're a major supplier of motorized pulleys for the U.S. materials handling market and we're part of the International Romeca Group, a major supplier of rollers, motorized pulleys, pulleys and components for the global materials handling market headquartered in Bergamo, Italy. Effective March 30th, a Romeca Corporation's plan is designated as essential during the virus response. Therefore, we're continuing production and repair of motorized pulleys. However, all of our sales and administrative staff are working from their homes as I am today. This video is for anyone working from home who is interested in belt conveyor operations and design. And I draw to your attention that we now have free online consulting and training available. The way we package that is, as you can see here, we have six standard conveyor problem topics listed, and we have three formats available, 10 to 20 minute tailored online discussions, 30 to 40 minute classes on standard topics, and a variety of multiple webinars, which can be designed according to your needs. A 10 to 20 minute online discussion will connect you with an engineer who will walk you through our recommendation to your specific problem. Our 30 to 40 minute classes will enable participants to uh, get information on the six standard conveyor drive topics. And the multiple seminars that we normally do in a year have been canceled. We won't be having sales schools, we won't be having engineer schools, but rather we have substituted multiple webinars for them. And these are going to be one hour per day sessions over an extended period, uh, tailored to the needs of whoever wants to participate. And we'll present information online, and we'll also coach participants uh, through workshops online. Today's topic is space or weight problems with conveyor drive systems. As usual, it's important that you identify whether your project is a new project or your project revolves around converting an existing system. This, of course, is going to be important. Whether your plant is a portable plant, such as pictured on the right, or a fixed plant, uh, will determine how you approach the problem of space and weight. How do we solve these problems? We identify the conveyor drive problem, request technical assistance, consider a potential technical solution, and then obtain and consider a commercial response. Now, what are the actual space and weight problems that we'll be talking about today? It could be tight working conditions, making it difficult to maintain drive equipment. It could be a light conveyor structure that causes its own set of problems. It could be restricted personnel access on existing catwalks, or it could be difficult conditions for the conveyor support structure, such as a, a very light, uh, high structure or something very deep in the tunnel. To request technical assistance, we recommend you download our app sheets from our website and fill them in appropriately to give us an idea of what you're addressing. And as usual, today's talk will be contrasting internally powered drives with exposed conveyor drives. You can see a, a pit beneath a train dump train dumper for coal at a power plant in the center. On the right, that's the existing exposed drive system driving that conveyor. On the left is the one uh, that has been converted from an exposed drive system to an internally powered system. Let's talk about case by case, tight working conditions. What about them? Well, on the left, uh, it's a no-brainer that this is a knuckle buster of a situation. Cross belts are notoriously uh, tight to squeeze in to catch one, two, or three cuts from a vibrating screen. The case on the right is actually uh, catching cuts from two screens, one on the left and one on the right. And you can see putting the drivetrain within the pulley shell uh, simplifies the maintenance of that particular device. If you have a light conveyor structure required for your application, I draw to your attention that an exposed drive system uh, essentially 
is an overhung load. The case on the left shows that uh, the exposed drive system puts most of its weight on the left truss of that conveyor, whereas on the right, the static load, which consists of the drive itself, is placed squarely between the two support beams, making it much uh, more streamlined and easy to resist the, the downward force from gravity. I draw your attention to a dynamic load, which is not uncommon. On the left, you can see an exposed drive system a driving a light flying conveyor, you might call it. It wrecks, at startup, it twists the conveyor structure, and so it needs to be designed to resist that that racking action. On the right, with an internally powered drive, there is no racking action because the torque is transmitted uniformly into each of the two conveyor support beams. And in this case, it's particularly important because this light conveyor is supported by chain from roof rafters. What about restricted personnel access on the catwalk? The examples on the left are from a power plant <clears throat> in which the exposed motor and gearbox made it very tight there, hard to get around actually. On the right, you can see after the conversion to an internally powered drive system. Note that access to the belt cleaner is quite free there. Maintenance personnel can have at it without having to uh, squeeze in between uh, gearboxes and motors and that sort of a thing. Now, Continuing to talk about restricted personnel access, here's a case in an underground mine in which the drive was at the discharge end loading a 100 foot deep hopper. <clears throat> the uh, miner decided that he wanted to replace the head drive with a tail drive by putting an internally powered drive in the tail. Notice that it fits uh, snugly in the mechanical take up with no difficulty. The idea being that now the maintenance people can have access to it from the catwalks that are to the side of the hopper rather than suspended over the the hopper opening itself as in the the head discharge position we talked about the topic of difficult conditions for support structure here's one pictured before you this is a radial stacker at another mine in which a uh, 100 horsepower tail drive system was converted to a dual drive system consisting of the existing drive plus the 60 horsepower internally powered drive from into head position and it's interesting to note that the drive pulley installed at the head weighed 2400 pounds whereas the non-driven pulley installed originally weighed 3300 pounds note also that the internally powered drive installed at the discharge end fit neatly into the existing mechanical take up how are all these things possible? Well, you'll notice in this cutaway that no through shaft is required. There's no large diameter shaft that goes in all the way through the pulley, but rather the motor frame and the gearbox frame act like a, a strong beam. So therefore only two stubs for shafts are necessary. Notice also that the center of mass of the drivetrain is more or less at the center line of the conveyor. Note also that the motor and the gearbox need no extra cast iron enclosures because the pulley shell serves as an enclosure. So therefore the weight of those cast iron enclosures is eliminated, allowing this type of a drive to be more than 30% less weight than an exposed drive system. Notice also that only the terminal box extends outside of the chute. As you request assistance from us, technical assistance, you would receive a response that looks something like this. This is an extract of a power calculation program in which we would recommend this 100 foot long conveyor carrying 500 tons per hour of limestone uh, at 8.2 horsepower. That would enable us to make sure that the correct power is uh, installed. And these are extracts from uh, plotting uh, software that we use to make sure that the geometry is appropriate for the pulley that's being considered. Also available freely from us. Also the program is downloadable from our website for do-it-yourselfers.
And for those engineers that would like to have a file of a drive mechanism to import into the file of their conveyor structure, we have 2D and 3D STP files readily available for all diameters from 3.15 inches all the way up to 40 inches. That would be part of our offer, of course. And the commercial offer would look like this, specification, part number, price, delivery promise, and so forth. And we have, uh, as I said, our sales and marketing staff standing by, working from home, and we are responding uh, each day to requests like this. So that concludes the topic of space and weight problems. I, I point out to you that we have two more videos planned. One will talk about uh, belt slippage and how to eliminate it. And one will talk about inadequate power and how to solve that problem. Once again, I remind you that now we have a free online consulting and training service available. You can get more information from that easily by going to our website, RemekaCorp.com. And I draw to your attention our how-to video library, which you can find on our YouTube channel on our website. Also, we have uh, on the YouTube channel on the website, our growing list of working from home videos, as well as our one hour webinars uh, for your use. To contact us, please uh, send us an email at sales-us at romeca.com or call us at 910-794. 9294. Thank you for spending time with us today, and uh, we all hope that this virus crisis will be over soon. Thank you. Let's keep our chins up. Goodbye.